we're going to talk about organic molecules. These are the four molecules that basically make up all the parts of living organisms. We'll use this information for the rest of the year. So at this point, we're really kind of learning like letters uh, in the alphabet to understand how to read. Here we're learning characteristics of these four molecules so that we can refer back to them as we go. You want to find this table in your packet and then just start filling out the information as we go along. Basically I'll start up here. Each slide will have a title to match one of these sections and you just put your notes in here. The advantage of using a flipped classroom is you can stop my recording to stay caught up. You can replay parts that you want to hear again. So here we go. Uh, basically we're talking about polymers. And what a polymer is, is a molecule made of repeating units. So if you think of it like the cars on a train, the whole train is the polymer, the big piece. The monomers would be the individual cars. The first group we're going to talk about is carbohydrates. And one way of telling the four macromolecules apart is by looking at what elements they're made out of and the ratio of those elements. So in your box where it says type of molecule, please write carbon, well C for carbon, H for hydrogen, O for oxygen. Because those three elements are all that is contained in a carbohydrate molecule. What makes carbohydrate unique is the ratio of these three elements. It's a one to two to one ratio. And so it's one unit of carbon in a ratio with two hydrogens and one oxygen. So an example of this is glucose, C6H12O6. And you can see how the carbons and the oxygens are the same and there's twice as many hydrogens. We'll continue with the next uh, square which is the basic function of carbohydrates. Their number one function is to provide your body with instant energy. That's the energy that you need for your cells to function to do the things that you do. Thinking, walking, drawing, running, whatever. The other bits of information about carbohydrates we want to know here is that they have four calories per gram. Subunits then, or monomers, are the little pieces that sugar or, or that uh, carbohydrates are made out of. And we call those simple sugars. The two simple sugars you see here are glucose and fructose. And the only way that they're different is just by uh, the structure. So they have the same elements. You can see this one's kind of broken into sort of six sides. This one has five. So it's the same elements and the same number, just arranged in a different way. Thus they have the same chemical formula. These are called monosaccharides. Mono means one, and saccharide means sugar. So the word literally means one sugar. One other thing to understand about sugars is as a general rule, they all end in OSE. So if you see a word that ends in OSE, you're going to make the assumption that that's a carbohydrate. Last for this square is that the form of energy that your cells use is glucose. So that's a very, very important molecule in terms of human anatomy. A couple other notes or things to know about carbohydrates uh, is that sucrose is really just two individual monosaccharides connected together. Sucrose is therefore a disaccharide. Di means two. So the word literally means two, sugar, or two sugars. This is the form of uh, sugar that you would have at home uh, to put on your cereal or whatever in the morning, known as simple sugar. Often when we react things in the human body, water is either needed to make the reaction go or water is a byproduct uh, of, of some reaction. In this case, to make sucrose, you take one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule, and when you connect them, you have water as a byproduct. 
So if you want to break sucrose apart, you do just the opposite. Take sucrose, we'll talk about this as an enzyme later, add one molecule, and now you've separated these back into glucose and fructose. Other notes, um, a polysaccharide may have up to 100 or maybe more units of glucose or uh, fructose all connected together. Depending on where that polysaccharide is found, we have slightly different names. When it's in a starch, or when it's in a plant, we call it starch. When it makes up the plant cell wall, the polysaccharide is cellulose. And then lastly, when we have uh, a polysaccharide in animals, we call that glycogen. Glycogen is stored in your muscles and your liver, and that's a, a form of ready, readily available energy that your body would have. If you notice, they kind of have the same structure, except they're the same units are just arranged in a slightly different way. Won't ask you this on a test, but you will be responsible for knowing these three. Some other information. This is a table giving you kind of a relative uh, sweetness of different kinds of sugar. Notice that many of them end in OSD. The point of this is that although there's sugar in milk, it doesn't taste like pop because lactose has a relatively low sweetness factor. Here's glucose, here's fructose. So we understand why fructose is contained in pop and things like that because it tastes very, very sweet to the tongue. Now that might make you wonder, hmm, how do artificial sweeteners work? So here's a molecule of sucrose and here's a molecule of Splenda. Basically they have almost the same structure except that in three of these locations the Splenda has a chlorine molecule where the sucrose has an oxygen and a hydrogen. The way this works is this uh, chemical arrangement stimulates your tongue to say, hey, this is sweet, 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 sweet. The difference, however, or why Splenda has no calories, is the body does not have an enzyme to break it down. Therefore, it's not digested, and therefore it has no calories. Next, we'll move on to the second macromolecule, which is fat. Fat has the same three elements in it as carbohydrates did. So please write down carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. The difference is that there's less oxygens than carbons. So we do not have a one to two to one ratio. So that's the way that we're gonna tell lipids and carbohydrates apart. Again, they both have the same elements in it, but the fats lack this one to two to one ratio. The basic function of fat that I want you to know is that it's for long-term storage. The other fact that makes uh, fats different is that they have a lot more calories per gram than carbohydrates or proteins do. So they have nine calories per gram. There are some other functions of fat, and you don't need to write these down on your sheet, but the fat helps insulate your body for thermal control some vitamins, A, E, K, and D, are stored in your fat. Therefore, you want to watch how much of that you intake because it's possible uh, for your body to store toxic levels of those. The fat helps protect your organs as a little bit of padding, and it's also important in the cell membranes of your cells. Again, this is the one that I want you to know at this point in time. Moving on to the subunits, Fat molecules are made of one glycerol molecule and three fatty acids. We often diagram this with the glycerol as the head of the molecule and the fatty acids as the tails. If we look at this, this is a molecule of, uh, of a fat. And the reason it has so many calories is there's so many little bonds to break. Every time you break a little chemical bond, you release some energy. So again, it has a lot of calories because it has a lot of uh, bonds to break. The two monomers then are different in this case, but they're still the building pieces, and so glycerol and three fatty acids would be our monomer. Uh, other notes would simply be that triglycerides uh, is a measurement of fat that's found in your blood. 
Uh, your doctor may track that as a indicator of your health. And that oils are also fats. They're simply liquid at room temperature. That's the end of this portion. Uh, we will have a second portion that has the proteins and nucleic acids in it.